Welcome back. We continue live right here with the Sports Call. Bob Pompiani, Chris Muller with you tonight, and we're taking your calls at 575-2600. Chris, all right, nine weeks. We're going to go by these nine weeks. MVP. At first, I had Russell Wilson as the guy I was looking at. He's kind of faded in my view. Uh, I also give credit to Brady and Rodgers. But my top three right now would be Kyler Murray, Patrick Mahomes, and Ben Roethlisberger. And the win-loss record is huge among the consideration here. Given what Roethlisberger has done based on what we saw last year without him. Your three? I'm actually going to say Mahomes is the front runner, although his ridiculous statistics are a little inflated by, I want to say, seven or eight screen pass touchdowns. I was looking through Pro Football Focus, and they don't quite have as high a grade on him as you would think, but I'd still put him number one. Uh, I would actually put Russell Wilson number two for this reason. When you said Mahomes, Murray, and Roethlisberger, Three teams that all have top 10 scoring defenses. Yes, even Arizona's ninth in the league. Russell Wilson is the only reason that the Seahawks aren't like 1-8, 2-7, or something like that. I mean, that is how bad they are in defense. Would you like to have a ridiculous stat? When the Legion of Boom team won it in 2013, they gave up like 2,700 yards passing and 16 touchdowns. They're the best in the league. Seattle's already 400 or so yards worse through nine games, and they've given up as many touchdowns through nine games as that team did the entire year when they won the Super Bowl. That's how bad they are. They're historically bad, and Russell Wilson's the only thing standing between them and oblivion. Ben Roethlisberger's third on my list, but he could jump Wilson uh, if he keeps putting up numbers like he did against the Bengals. I, I think as much as I have not really entertained the idea that Roethlisberger could seriously put himself in the mix, he absolutely can if the Steelers keep winning and he keeps throwing three touchdowns or so a game. There's no question. It's numbers, 22 touchdowns, four picks. It's wins. It's yard. It's all of that stuff. And, uh, yeah, I understand what you're saying about Russell Wilson. But at this point, uh, he's fallen out of my top three based on what I've seen in nine games. What do you think out there? Give us a call. Let's start with Nunzio and Braddock. Nunzio, what's going on? Thanks for joining us tonight. Hey, gentlemen. I just want to put my uh... – Hat in the, in, uh, in the ringer here with Ben. He should be the MVP of the league, period. He has no stats. As his stats are up there. His ridiculous stats from last week after not playing, practicing all week is off the charts. Without a doubt to me, he's the MVP of the league. And you hear guys like Chase Claypool say, you know, it's true what you hear. He's drawing this stuff up. He's telling me where to go, and I'm going which gives credence to what he said last week, and a lot of people had some doubt with that. But listen, in the wind blowing the way it was blowing, Chris, when I saw that game in Cleveland, first and foremost, I'm sitting there saying, that's coming this way, or it's already here. How in the world is anyone going to pass the football? And yet, they passed the ball 46 times, which is not necessarily what I would have ever expected, but he was outstanding in navigating that ball in the air. Some of them touch throws, some of them bullets, but I thought he was really good. I bet you his arm strength on pure deep balls is down from what it used to be, like maybe maxes out around 55, 60 yards. But arm strength manifests in a lot of different ways, and he was absolutely zipping the ball in on intermediate throws. I thought it was incredibly impressive uh, as far as performances go. His most impressive of the year, regardless of opponent quality or lack thereof, they didn't have a running game. The weather was what you described, and he was, after that first quarter when they needed a little time to get going, he was absolutely on point. Uh, that's the one thing I would say is that he was just unbelievably uh, strong and stout with those throws in far from optimal conditions for a quarterback. And as far as like the MVP hands down, I, I do want to say this one thing. I think we are a little bit in the fishbowl here, and this takes nothing away from what he's doing right now. We all saw how bad it got with Rudolph and Hodges, that they were winning with smoke and mirrors, and then they just the whole thing collapsed like a house of cards. I think that inflates a little bit. Roethlisberger's candidacy in this town because everyone here knows how bad it gets if he goes down. I would agree with that, but I also take nothing away from what he's been able to do given the surgery, given everything that he's had to go through. To me, he'd be my comeback player of the year if not for what Alex Smith is doing, not only playing, but he threw the ball over 50 times yesterday. I'm shocked by that. And every time he would get a hit, if I was his wife and kids, I'd be really nervous about that situation. All right, let's go out to Mike in Oakland. Mike, thanks for joining us. What's up, Mike? Hey, what's up, guys? Good talk to you again, Bob. How you doing? I'm well, thank you. Uh, two, two things, totally one on the opposite side of the spectrum. First, a question, and then I want to make a quick comment and get your thoughts. Uh, do you guys think that Connor will be back next year? Will the Steelers uh, 
re-sign him. I just don't think so. I don't think that he's shown that he he's uh, playing at a level that the Steelers are going to uh, take another chance on him for another few seasons. Uh, and, and my other point is, did you see the article recently uh, today about AB? Uh, like a few weeks before um, he came back to the Bucks, he was a accused of where he lives of throwing a bicycle at a security guard and breaking a camera right. uh, and they didn't charge him but the Bucks knew about it and their their statement is oh well he's doing well with us since then so I mean how many chances is this guy going to keep having it's obvious he has CTE and that's that's evident okay well, but he's been accused of sexual misconduct he's had a lot uh, of stuff felonies. and there was a time I thought he was cleaning his act up because I didn't hear from him but I heard about this story and quickly, Tampa Bay immediately came out with a statement saying, since he's been here, he's done everything we've asked him to do. But listen, talent always wins out in sports. It seems like guys get chance after chance after chance. He's running out of chances. And quite frankly, uh, nothing happened with this. I'm surprised nothing happened with this. You made a thumbs down with Connor. Um, I think I'm heading in that direction. I didn't think that at the beginning. I'm giving more money now and more. Uh, if I have a choice, Juju has earned more in terms of a, a chance to get another contract here versus James Conner. They're going to have to make tough choices. But what about that run game, Chris? Because they don't even seem to be committed to it. You still have to be good in, in situation, situational football when you have to run it, and they haven't been able to do it. First about the Antonio Brown thing, a little coda to that story. It is all you need to know about talent gets you second chances. The HOA uh, president who was feuding with him, who had the problem with him, called him a hero for helping them beat the Carolina Panthers. <laughs> the Panthers came into the game three and six. Let's pipe down with the hero talk here. They were a terrible football team. Anyway, now that I've got that out of the way. Uh, you don't, I, I don't think you can bring James Conner back under any circumstances. Like you just said, you've got tough decisions to make. Let it be a committee of the guys you've lined up behind him. McFarlane, Snell, if you've got to put Samuels back in, Jalen Samuels back in there as maybe a semi-running back, you just can't afford to get sentimental with James Conner. The production hasn't been there, especially lately, and this is a what-have-you-done-for-me-lately business. Yeah, I will say this, though. I think schematically they're not getting the job done with that. And also, it looks like the guys up front aren't winning their battles. They're doing a pretty good overall job in the pass game, obviously. But the run game, for whatever reason, just has not been there. But they're going to need it at some point. We'll see how it goes. Right now, it's time for our Tri-State Office Furniture Tweet of the Day. And this comes to us from Neil Walker, who tweets about Pine Richland. Way to go, Eli. Now go get that PIAA championship. And he was referring to Eli Yoakum, who broke... Uh, record once held by Neil Walker at Pine Richland, uh, 156 career receptions. Boy, that Pine Richland team is something as they took it to Peters Township the other day. You saw that game here on CW. We'll take a break, come back with more of your calls right here on CW. It's the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call.